What's up mates, it's Uncle Nightshift again. Hey, I hope you won't mind if tonight's video is gonna be shorter and more straightforward than usual. At first I didn't want to release this as its own video, but then I remembered how some of you often say Man, I wish you posted this earlier, and well, I don't know when I'll be able to weather another set of furl model tracks, so I thought, hey, maybe someone will find a few techniques from this one interesting. And as long as it's a separate video, it'll be easier to find, so yeah, let's take a look at it. Alright, so as most of us know, Furl Model is a brand making metal workable tracks which are assembled with pieces of wire. That's mostly it, although sometimes it's necessary to use super glue as well, just like in this case. They are very easy to assemble, handle and paint, and they are almost indestructible, so no worries, they won't fall apart while you're weathering them, as is often the case with workable plastic ones. One single disadvantage is that paint doesn't hold well on their shiny metal surface, so I always start by burnishing them. Burnishing fluid is a type of chemical which corrodes their surface in a manner of seconds. It's very corrosive, that's not even a pun, so I recommend wearing gloves. Also, if you don't want to waste one bottle on a set of tracks, instead of dipping them into the fluid, apply it with an old toothbrush. Also, also, the brand isn't important, be it the one I use from Wilder, or Ammo, or AK, it's your choice. You can even make one yourself if you have access to a chemistry lab, but you're on your own and you definitely didn't hear about it from me, okay? <laughs> As you can see, the burnishing process is immediate and the results are very nice. In many cases, this already serves as a base rusty color, which you can then enhance with more rust tones using enamels or acrylics, and then proceed to apply dust tones or mud or whatever. But it also serves as a primer. Like I said, paints don't hold well on the shiny metal surface, and they would quickly start to peel off, but the burnishing fluid creates this microscopic texture, just like real rust which has been scaled down, and paints will hold on this kind of surface very well. So yeah, that's why I'm comparing it to a primer, like we would use on a model. And that's exactly why I always recommend to use burnishing fluid, even if the tracks are gonna be completely covered in mud and none of the rusty surface is gonna be visible. Which is <laughs> exactly what's gonna happen in this video. Unfortunately, the fluid won't react in places where super glue has been used. Normally, I would fix this by quickly spraying these parts with dark grey acrylic paint, but in this case it will be completely covered with mud, so it's not a big deal. Anyway, the tracks are now prepared for weathering, and I usually weather them the same way like the tank, so they won't look out of place. In this case the model was weathered with textured earth, static grass and natural fibers, and also some real gravel, but we won't use that, then it was pre-dusted with acrylic paints, some dry mud and dust effects, and finally with a layer of dark mud. So, textured earth. It's an acrylic paste with authentic texture. This is the foundation for all the upcoming layers. The coolest thing about weathering metal tracks is how sloppy you can be. Because of that, the process is very fast and enjoyable. I even applied it with the speckling method, just... One thing, always make sure the tracks can move freely after each layer. Sometimes paints can clog up their pins, but some little brute force will make them work properly again. Then I applied the mud over those super glued parts which didn't react with the burnishing fluid and... The first weathering step is done. Note how I left the inner sides clean. This is where they come into contact with the road wheels and as such, this part has to remain smooth. Now it's time to add some static grass and natural fibers. In real life, tracks often tear out pieces of foliage, which then gets stuck between links. I intentionally added more foliage than I normally would, because a lot of it will fall off before the tracks are done. This is because I'm using gravel and sand fixer to hold them in place, be it on the tracks or on the tank. The glue does its job well, but enamel thinner can soften it, which then results in the grass falling off. 
Also, these tracks don't have a very large surface, so most of the grass is held in place by just a few millimeters of contact, which is not much compared to some bulky tracks like a KV-1 or Tiger or I don't know. You get the point. Well, if nothing else, they sure do look interesting right now, but well, let's now apply some pre-dusting. Again, I'm using the same paints like I did on the model, so I made a diluted mixture consisting of roughly 9 parts buff and 1 part dark grey. This is gonna be applied with an airbrush, because the point of this step is to destroy everything I've done so far. <laughs> well, not exactly. I usually use this method only when I need the tracks to be completely covered in earth tones, meaning no rust is gonna show through. I know, the result is then not gonna be as exciting, but unfortunately, if the tracks are completely covered in mud, there's not much we can do except covering them in mud. Anyway, now we can add another layer of dry mud and dust with the Aqualine paint, which is an acrylic paint, but it can be reactivated and blended like enamel paint, but with water. And obviously, I used it to weather the model as well, so... Yeah, gotta keep those tones consistent, you know. Before we proceed any further, let's polish those cleats. These tracks don't have rubber pads, so their cleats would get polished by coming into contact with the ground. This is one of the easiest things with metal tracks, as all you need is to gently sand the paint and burnished surface away, exposing the shiny metal underneath. There's also a very specific reason why I like to polish them now and not after all effects are applied. Sanding creates a very fine powder made from paint and metal and this grayish powder can get trapped on the surface and oftentimes it's hard to remove. As a result, it slightly changes the overall tone of the tracks and even if you weather them the exact same way like the tank, they'll just look a little different and out of place. But doing it like this, I still have one more layer of mud coming on top of this and it won't get affected by the metal dust so everything will be okay. And I also sanded the guiding teeth on the inner side as these also get polished by rubbing against the wheels. So now we can apply the final layer of dark mud. This paint is enamel and there are two points I want to make about it. You can easily use enamel paints and thinners on metal tracks, but if those were plastic workable links, they would most likely start falling apart as the enamel thinner would soften their pins. And the second thing is, unfortunately the thinner is also gonna react with the gravel and sand fixer which holds the grass in place, so it's important to be a little careful around those places, although sometimes it's just unavoidable. That's why I added more grass in the first place. And no, even though it sounds like the most blatant excuse, I'm not lying. I mean, come on, I would never lie to you. Anyway, speckling is also very important when creating those final layers of mud, as it creates very nice but subtle texture, which is very handy, especially on those inner sides, which until this point were pretty bland and unremarkable. Ok, so the tracks are almost complete and the only thing that remains is to polish the inner sides. For this I like to use a graphite stick or just a pencil and a silicone brush for polishing. It's important to note where each wheel is located, although in most cases there's just one wheel on each side, but here we have 4 rows of wheels, so 2 on each side. And well, the technique is extremely easy but it's also quite boring because you need to paint a straight line along the entire track and then gently polish it with the silicone brush or you can use also a napkin or eraser and then one more quick pass with graphite. And then of course repeat as many times as you need. The result looks pretty nice and of course this type of polished surface only appears on tanks which are active and moving. If the tank has been parked for a longer period of time or it's been knocked out, these parts would be corroded. So all that remains is to attach both ends back together, cover the wire with paint and the tracks are done. Now we can put them on the model and that's it I guess. 
So I hope you enjoyed this video and maybe learned something new as well. And if you didn't, well, then I'm sorry, but this is all I had at the moment. A bigger set of tracks, let's say, for Tiger is much more interesting to paint and weather, but until I get there, it might take a few months and... I just wanted to make a quick video with some basic techniques. Okay, so just a quick recap. Burnishing, important. Serves as a base rust layer and also as a primer. Textured earth or mud? Only important if the tracks are gonna be muddy, be it wet or dry. Static grass? Not important. Pre-dusting? Not important. Only when the tracks are gonna be completely covered with earth tones. Dry mud and dust? Pretty important. It works in conjunction with the dark mud to create a more realistic effect. Polished cleats? Important if it's an operational tank. If it's not, just sand them and paint with rust tones. Dark or wet mud? Important only if the tank is operating in a soft and wet ground. Polished inner sides? Very important and often forgotten. If the tank is not moving, these should be corroded. And yeah, that's it. Anyway, next week I'm going to finish this model, so if you've been following the previous videos, make sure you won't miss it. And as always, a big thank you to my patrons, your help is greatly appreciated. If you'd like to get some extra content like behind the scenes, almost daily photo updates for my workbench, or just chat with me through DMs, then consider checking it out. And if not, you're still helping me to grow this channel by watching videos, commenting, giving them a thumbs up and just overall being a subscriber. So a huge thank you to you as well. That's all I have for now. So thank you all for watching. I wish you an amazing weekend and I'll see you mates in the next one. And of course, here are some bloopers. This is where they come into contact with the road wheels and as such, this part... <laughs> These tracks don't have rubber pads, so their cleats would get polished by coming... <laughs> this paint is enamel. <laughs> if the tank has been parked for a longer period of... <laughs> you can easily use enamel paints and thinners... <laughs>